In this video, we are going to go over the concept of torque. The idea of torque seems to give students a lot of trouble, and I'm really not sure why. If you've ever used a wrench, or if you've ever been on a seesaw, I think you have an intuitive understanding of the idea of torque. Let's use the wrench to illustrate the concept of torque. Torque is simply the turning effect of a force. The wrench exemplifies what is referred to as a lever or a rigid body. Let's say that we apply a force some distance away from the pivot point or the axis of rotation. That force is going to cause a tendency for the wrench to rotate. That in essence is the concept of torque. Now this torque is known as torque. It's also known as moment of force or it's known as moment for short. Now there is a technical difference between torque and moment of force or moment but we are going to ignore those differences for this class. Now let's go ahead and remove that wrench and let's just look at the axis of rotation, the rigid body, and the force that's being applied. That torque is known as a free vector and it can be applied really anywhere on that rigid body. Also note that we can determine the direction of that turning force. If you were to put your right hand along the axis of rotation, and then slide your hand along the rigid body until you got to the point of force application. If you then curled your fingers in the direction of the force arrow, that will exemplify the direction of the torque. In this case, this downwardly directed force is going to create a clockwise torque. Now I hope you can appreciate that if we applied an upward force on that wrench, that's going to create a counterclockwise torque. What happens if I were to apply a force directed as shown here with F3? Again, I hope you can appreciate that this will not create any turning effect or any torque on the wrench because the force is going directly through the axis of rotation. Similarly, if I were to push on the wrench in the direction of F4, that force would also be directed through the axis of rotation and would not create any torque on the wrench. Now where we apply that force on the rigid body also matters. The distance from the axis of rotation to that point of force application is known as the lever arm. The torque is then going to be determined as the product of the length of the lever arm multiplied by the perpendicular force. If we bring that force closer to the axis of rotation, that force is going to be less effective in terms of creating a torque or creating a turning effect on that wrench. Similarly, if I were to bring that force out even further, then I'm going to create a larger torque for the same amount of force. Because again, we can say that torque is going to be the product of the distance of the lever arm times the perpendicular force. Now note that I said only the perpendicular component of the force. It is only that perpendicular component of the force that will produce torque. If I apply a force at an angle, that force will not be as effective in producing torque than if I were to apply it perpendicular to the rigid body. To account for that, I have to look at the angle between the force vector and the rigid body. And then to correct for the perpendicular component of the force, I would multiply the length of the lever arm times the force times the sine of the angle between the force vector and the rigid body. So there you have it. That is an introduction to the concept of torque.